Happy Holy Day Wars, and welcome to House of Reawakening Minds. House of Reawakening Minds exists to provide for exploration and practice of spirituality and an enlightened community dedicated to honoring the myriad of sacred pathways to the universal creator. We are a holistic center for spiritual grounding, free thought, self-discovery, and more science, an awakening experience for all ages. Tonight, we are pleased to have with us back again our National Grand Sheik, Taj Tariq Bey, as he presents Aftermath, an analysis of what happened and prognostication of what is to come. Let's receive him. Islam. Shalom. Vadi Makum. Um, we want to go over some things that that uh, we talked about before in relationship to the current uh, world affairs. And it has much to do with people uh, preparing themselves, which we've been trying to, um, to do our best to get people to prepare their families for a lot of the injury and injuries that have been inflicted upon the people by de facto government operatives as well as um, trying to prepare people to protect themselves to the best of their ability from the same de facto operatives uh, and uh, government imposters who have been injuring them as of late and who are continuing to cause injury and misery on the people, etc. There's a lot of things that we talked about in the past, um, logically, that the um, people have been made aware of relative to the de facto operations of um, members of the cotton wigs and the conscience wigs, etc., which now make up the uh, foreign operators operating on our land at North America, calling themselves the Republican Party and the Democratic Party of the U.S. corporation uh, uh, operations, et cetera, which were dissolved uh, in 1861 and reformulated um, with similar sounding names to the corporation uh, a couple of times more operating up until today. Um, however, the interesting thing that uh, people need to take into consideration, because I know that, that a lot of people are, are kind of like, um, how do you say, disheveled a little bit and uh, feeling a lot of discomfort uh, concerning their private um, predetermined election operations for their corporation while they're still pretending to the masses to be a country. And of course, this creates a lot of confusion. However, the in, while it's not our um, business in the sense of us being a part of it, because we're not a part of that foreign um, human trafficking corporation. However, the uh, Curia members and the um, the cotton wigs and the um, conscience wigs operatives, you know, have been uh, cooperating with with each other, you know, raping our estates, and this is and, and to that degree we have concerns meaning that um, while we are not part of, of the system itself of the colonial operators operating at North America, we have been subjected to many of the miseries uh, inflicted by them. Um, and as we often talk, like myself and uh, Dr. Naila was talking uh, earlier, uh, I think it was just past week and we mentioned uh, quite a few times how a lot of times things that we've talked about with you, we have been redundant with. Uh, and it's not so much uh, the, uh, of the issue of the redundancy as, as it is that we've been trying to get people to act and to do what they can with themselves and their families to, um, to build buffers uh, against the operations of the uh, dark priesthood and members of the Roman Curia, who you commonly refer to as, you know, the U.S. politicians and, and bishopic priesthood, which are our partners, etc. 
But um, in the nature of our conversation tonight, um, Dr. Nyla, would, would there be some questions that, because I know a lot of, of questions that, that came from even the last, the last uh, classes that we had um, that we were unable to answer because of a time constraint that are related even to these things, because pretty much a lot of the things that we've told the people have had their service to be acted upon actually, actually in past years or past months, if you get the point. Um, and it's sort of like, you know, like the calendar of life has caught up in many areas of the lives of the people. It's sort of like, you know, like we say to people, remember we had this conversation and, 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 and as a matter of fact, someone approached me recently um, when I was in Washington area. As a matter of fact, when we were at Everlasting Life, it was very packed and was some sisters there with children too. Um, it was beautiful because they had a lot of children, a lot of babies there. Um, and all the seats were taken. But um, she was mentioning, she was looking at uh, some of the videos on the House of Reawakening Minds and how um, we had mentioned that uh, people will find themselves where they are, where they are is where they're going to be, sort of, sort of like. And one of her concerns was the implication does it mean that it's too late for people in some ways? No, no, long as you got breath. However, certain things that we should have been doing, you know, that we have been procrastinating with, we, we have to pay the price, the political price for it, you know, um, um, which is the only reason why, why is it, just put it this way, why is it that you pro prognosticate? Why is it that if you say things, you tell people, it's to tell them there's there's a roadblock or there's a rut in the street or there's um a flooded highway in life um and this is back to see i don't like to i don't like to use the the term seer and prophet type things though i see you know i never look at it from that perspective i think a lot of times that's overused do, do you understand? However, I do see things, do you know? And most of what I do and I've done is because I see things. But I, I always try to um, kind of put things down to earth. I don't like, um, I ne I'm not pleased with um, the general concepts that people look for in people who they consider seers you know the honor type thing and the right. um celebrity type thing i i don't like that and so a lot of times even some things that i see even more than what i see i don't say because i don't want to be categorized i don't like that categorization type thing and so i try to avoid that um uh, however um I'm not disappointed so much as I already understand because I already knew it was certain things that were going to happen anyway. But I'm just disappointed for some people who would who would stress themselves because they didn't do certain things. Do, do, do you understand? But there's other there's other actions that are taking place with others who are intervening. Nevertheless, nevertheless, it is a, it is a nevertheless. And I get it. You're you're saying. While many might be in in a state of despair of over the way things uh, are seemingly to be yes. working out, there's a there's a far greater plan, and there are others yes. who are at in other things and other energies and other beings that are at work for the greater good. Yes. Of of of. And the truth of the matter is that they're been they are being severely interfered with. Their plans against humanity their plans against us because there's actually a layer there's a layer there's a hierarchical layer Absolutely. of operators but i've always tried to um i've always taken the position um of and i think you know this of avoiding sometimes talking about the outsiders and from the perspective that so many people are doing that, but actually not seeking to give remedy. 
and my position has always been um when you tell the people about the monstrous ox octopus some people shut down i prefer to deal with let's talk about that little pen knife you got and cutting off the tentacles when they come at you and don't not that the head is not there but don't worry about that so much because the head can't touch you without the tentacles absolutely that's within your grasp and your capacity to deal with meaning that um if people are looking at the octopus there's a there's a sense of forlorn and a sense of um powerlessness that a lot of people have when they don't recognize or respect their own spirituality or their real being you know they don't trust you know it's sort of like you know how like people will constantly talk about um in the different dogma orders and in the different religious orders how they fear no one but yahweh fear no one but allah fear no one but the buddha fear no one but jesus fear no one but muhammad fear the divine but they always submit to the corrupted politicians and the priesthood who always claim to represent the divine who always claim to be doing something good for the people but it always ends up the people getting injured it always ends up the priesthood being perverts and robbers and thieves and liars and the same thing with the politicians and the people uh have this tendency of continue continuously looking for rescue from the different idol gods that have been presented to them by the same body of men etc who not only fail to give good service to humanity but are actually been severe parasites against humanity and upon humanity so i've always taken the position um that's why you see me re uh, uh, redundantly would look at at the angles of it of telling people what things are uh distinguished from what they thought they were not for the position or not for necessarily taking the position of condemning or exposing but just simply to say to start seeing things for what they are and you take your choice of what you want to deal with it because people also have been trained into that kind of mentality of looking for sacrificial lambs and 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 uh how do you say image image laden burdened uh saviors type thing and very often and if you watch the pattern they rarely pay attention to what the seers are telling them they start dealing with the personalities or the images of the persons which is the wrong concept and therefore the cures that are presented or brought to them or shared with them from any any of the side any of the dimensions or any of the levels of the hierarchy or any of the ancestors which is relative in 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 a sense to the same method of, of communications you know um they fail to get it you know as an example when you see um uh, people talk about the lessons of those who have activated the kundalini to the degree that they have become the ascended crust or the ascended buddha which is not a man but it is the capacity of humanity it is the capacity you know so these anthropomorphic figures that we have like the muhammad's jesus and the buddhas confucius um don't look at them as men look at them as developmental levels for humanity and look at these as sim simply um degreed uh, experiences that uh some are manifest and some are just anthropomorphic that is presented to help humanity evolve but that what they're seeking outside in all of these imageries is actually what's already inside of them you know and 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 these experiences even these negatives are also part of those lessons however on another level because we know that the truth of humanity has not been told to the masses uh, um it also makes them subject to certain injuries um beyond what they think because their concepts you know the whole you know like we talked about in the, in the, in the um in the book uh, more's defined 
and we talk about the God sellers. So the God sellers are basically the priesthood um, for the most part, except for some, are aware of the hierarchy of the outsiders, you know? And then you have um, some people who make a career talking about the outsiders. Um, but the outsiders are always vague. Do, do, do you understand? So my position, again, like I say, has been always to, to, to understand that if the octopus sends a tentacle out and you can't beat the octopus, do the skills on learning how to cut that tentacle. That if you don't cut it off, you make it bleed. And this is why I've always told people, you know, to create a trust, um, to nationalize as an example. But you notice and you know that um, that we've expanded informationally, cause and effect information relative to nationality uh, that generally most people who talk about it don't give. And the reason why is because um, I know, but it is not for me to know for me. I know that many needs to need to know that their actions in these areas itself is an exercise of a plebiscite power that they're not aware that they have. Because you already know when you talk to most people around the country and you talk to people that's outside of this particular jurisdiction, uh, kingdom or country jurisdiction, um, that many people are, are attached to and associated with and supportive of the principles, the principles behind the Morris Divine and National Movement, even if they're not attached to the movement directly itself as a structured order, but the principle is universal. And the principle has much to do with the liberation of humanity. However, that liberation is actually on more levels than, than they've been told, you know? And I know that often we don't go there necessarily. And I choose not to, you know, um, because so many people are messing with these with us. And the people have a tendency to get scattered. So I more or less will concentrate in those areas that I that I already know that cause the 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 demonic oct octopus to bleed. Even though you don't have the power necessarily to overcome that octopus yourself, because it takes a concerted effort of not only humanity, but actually some 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 other aid. But it ain't the God the way the con the way the people think it is. If you get the point, the way they've been told is not what it is. So what you're saying is that the people, the old adage from the movie, you can't handle the truth from a standpoint of yeah. what's really going on. A lot of people would not be able to wrap their head around uh, the truth of what's really yeah. going on behind the scenes. Yes. And so a lot of times we would just hint to the people and just tell them some truth but without going into it, letting them know that everybody that's that's here is not necessarily from this planet, you know, which is enough that they need to know. You, you know what I mean? Uh, because they start making things out of it where, uh, put it this way, they start building in areas that they have no power to affect. My issue is I'm more concerned with, with us using the power that is available to us because it's actually more than enough that's needed for the rescue. Although I know also that um, there's a, 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 a consciousness concept that they don't have that power, but that's not true. However, uh, I recognize this. You know, it's sort of like when Nova Drali said, if I could get you all thinking, if I could just get you all thinking again, you save yourselves. And it has more to do with, you know, a lot of times people looking are looking from the perspective of perfecting a position or perfecting a process, to, you know, for human liberation. Whether now, cause, cause essentially, you know, what you, what you see is people trying to perfect processes for restoring the lost estate 
which would include the nationality and would include uh, the, sta uh, the status and the estate in relationship to the states and the corporate states and their capacities and their incapacities uh, relative to operations of normalcy in everyday living affairs, i.e. on generating um, energy outputs so that you can feed your family, et cetera, and so that you can um, live reasonably outside of the weather systems, et cetera, or inside of the weather systems and finding uh, quite difficult to do so, not based on necessarily your capacities or your skills, but based on the abuses that are taking place uh, under the Roman courier operators of the de facto impersonators as government. Um, and so um, again, and this is redundant, um, I know from another level of thinking and you know being that the people have more power than they think they have, but they have been convinced that they have no power. That's the difficult, that's the area that we are constantly working in. That's the area that over the years, even in your work, when you were doing pastoring, et cetera, that made you kind of a unique in the, in the platform of pastors where you were actually um, coming at the people from that um, uh, pastoral type angle, but you always came with angles of psychological cures and you know a, a consciousness of countering psychic attacks without telling the people that you are actually doing that. It, it, like as an example, and this is just the point, I was looking at um, or, or listening to a couple of your things or a couple, or actually last month, a couple of those old discs that I had. Um, and I was looking at um, the fact that you were actually countering psychic attacks. I wasn't looking at probably how a lot of people look at things, you know, what they think they say. I, I kind of like, I see on a totally different levels, you know. And um, your consciousness of you doing that has has opened up more, you know, or, or even recognizing what you were doing then in some areas. You know what I mean? Meaning that in the psych in the psych in the psych order that you were at that time when you was pastoring on a regular basis, um, from what I could read in the disc couple of discs that I was looking at, um, you weren't denying, you weren't in denial, but you weren't you weren't as open as as it was very clear that you are. And it had more to do with um, a little bit of defense, a little defensive. Because um, I'm actually, I'm talking feelings that I was getting out of you, just so you have to excuse me for that. Because um, your considerations were, one, with your personal relationship with your marriage, on certain things on how you would, um, the way I was reading it. Um, coming strong, but limiting because you didn't want to outshine or override a lot of people around you, but you were highly more capable of doing so. Um, and so you suppressed a lot of your, um, abilities, even in that area, although that venue was open for it. The energy that you had behind what you were doing was stronger than this venue that you were on. It's sort of like being in. It's sort of like um, belonging on a bigger stage, but you were satisfied with the stage that you were on, and you made yourself fit. But you were bigger than that. But you knew if you stepped up, that they would reject you. You know, I mean, that's what I was reading. Do Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And not that you were so much concerned with the rejection from a personal point of view, but from a caring point of view that you wanted to help. And you know, when you want to help and you see um, the rejection is, uh, 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 is interfering with your capacity to help, not with your ego. Although some people would take it that way, you know? And this is a conflict that often you have when you, when you see. You know, 
um, and then trying to play that line, trying to um, get along and and stay in your space a little bit. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Not not getting too too far into someone else's space, but actually trying to help. You know, from a standpoint of um, where we are, and I get what you're saying. You know, with regard to me, and uh, I receive that. Um, I was just bringing that up because I was looking at, or I was listening to a couple. <laughs> yeah, of years. I, I don't want you to get too far. No, off. I'm just saying I, that was just okay. A All thought. Right. All right. Okay. In All the right. in the nature of what I'm uh, what yeah, we're discussing, even, even with you know the way I see things, yeah. even coming from that background mm -hmm. of having you know been a pastor, having had some level of of ability to foresee or prognosticate, as we're mm -hmm. talking about, um, and not even knowing what it was or respecting it for what it was until mm -hmm. other things had to open up. I see in the movement, in the Moorish movement, mm -hmm. I see a tendency for people to become very narrow, it's, narrow in their in their perspective, uh, narrow, narrow in their scope. It is a continued training, a continuation of, of a train entrainment. Right. Is it? A continuation of entrainment that already existed that has not been shed. There's and, and an implication. There, there is always a need, even yeah. we used to talk about in 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 a church setting, of, mm. of not not just building up but tearing down. Yes. And so a lot of times, instead of tearing down old constructs, old mindsets, and so forth, we just want to build upon. And you can't those old things. And so yeah, we I see some the same things thing. must I, be shed. Right. And people don't want to do that. A lot of times they want to make it fit. But they want the benefit. And guess what? You know the old the, the old saying about the cup runneth over. You know I say um, you got to sometimes you got to empty the cup, and you got to be willing to do this. And it it it, it you know it, the experience that you and I don't want to go into this, but just as a mention to you, and it just happened to be because we're we're talking, and it just happened to be that I was looking in some of your listening to some of your discs, uh, my tapes and videos. Yeah, no, no CDs. The CDs, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was just recently. It couldn't have been no more than a week or so ago. I say last month, but it was no more than more than a week ago. And then I was, you know, while I was working, I put them on just to keep myself busy. And, and then I was feeling those energies, you know. So I was kind of, you know, just casually reading. And of course, because we're here together, it's just coming up because you thought you thought of this title. Right. And it was just fitting right where I was mentally at anyway. You know, so I just wanted to uh, just that's the only reason I brought it up, not because that was planned. Oh, oh no. Um, but um, again, like I say, um, our real concern, as an example, where you see people are so involved with this, um, not election, but placement. Right. Because there is no election. Now, just I'm just being blunt. There is no election. It's placement. Um, and the battle between the cotton wigs and the um, conscience wigs, um, as well as um, you know, the concern with um, so-called uh, mail-in ballots. You know, that's part of the system for that. That's already been in place for stealing and stealing elections for the public. But in truth the placements are already in place anyway. Right. Um, and um, the conscience wigs and the cotton wigs are simply two sides of the same coin. And this is why you see me saying to people, um, I'm not defending Donald Trump, but I already knew that Donald Trump was assigned. I knew that, you know, before he was even put in office, you know, 